Hey guys, Martin here. Uh, we're still here. Yes, uh, I'm going to reiterate what this series is about because every so often I like to do that. Uh, not just to pad for time, but because I'm sure there are people who are tuning in uh, at a later date uh, that don't necessarily know why I'm talking to a camera about depression. And uh, the reason for that is that I was diagnosed uh, with depression about three years ago now. And uh, it's something that I've been living with uh, on and off. Uh, not on and off, actually. It's always there. Uh, but these days, it's less so. And part of that reason is because I've been doing, taking medication. I've been going to see the therapist. I've been uh, recording these vlogs. I've just been trying to trying my best to find every opportunity to uh, not let it get the better of me. And uh, these vlogs are just me talking about my experiences uh, going through that. And sometimes I have bad times and sometimes I have good times. And uh, a lot of the time, uh, regardless of whether it's good or bad, I still come out having learned something or sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just, uh, I just sort of break down and I have a good cry. Um, but then there's the next day, you know, and that's the important thing. The reason I started doing this series is because when I took group therapy uh, a few years back, uh, one of the things that has helped me more than anything was to hear the words from other people that I thought only existed in my head. You know, I, I always thought that, you know, if I was going through something like this, it must have just been an isolated incident and that, you know, this is something that, you know, it's all on me. It's all just me being an idiot, being a loser and... I didn't understand that it was something that a lot of people were affected by, you know, in a very similar, sometimes identical way. Uh, not always the same, but we have similar feelings. And hearing that from other people made me feel like I wasn't going through this alone. And while that's simultaneously an awful idea, it's also a positive thing, because if you're not alone on a sinking ship, there are still ways to uh, to gather the morale and get off of it and hopefully swim to safety. Uh, I'm not going to say that I'm, you know, in a sinking ship necessarily. I, I don't feel that way anymore. For a long time, I just thought it was inevitable that this would get the better of me and that I would lose and that I would continue losing and that there was no point trying to fight that. Um, but hearing from other people who had been dealing with this, some of them for more than a decade, and they were still trying, you know, that, that to me is what helps me get out of bed and try and face this thing. And uh, I'm not going to say that, you know, my words are necessarily going to be, have the same effect on you, but it helps me to talk about it. And it helps me to think that there are people listening who might also be going through this. So that's why I do this. It's, uh, it's kind of self-indulgent, you might say, I guess, but I, I also just feel that it's important to talk about because... If we don't talk about this, and I've said this in the last video, if we don't talk about this, then it gets, it makes the damage that much worse. You know, it enhances the feeling of being alone and being miserable and being depressed and, and feeling worthless because nobody's listening <laughs> at the end of the day. In my opinion, a lot of people feel like depression is just, you know, a, a mood, but it's not. I've said this many times. It's a sickness that we're going through. And there is no one specific cure for it, but, you know, if you keep fighting it, I, I'm not going to say that it's going to happen overnight, but the only way for it to really win is if you give up. And giving up isn't an option, in my opinion. And that's what this is. This is me not giving up. Uh, this week, I wanted to talk about some things that I've started to notice in just my day-to-day -day life that uh, I believe is uh, sort of sort of an after effect of going through depression and, and, and going through uh, a lot of the experiences that have resulted from depression, you know, going to therapy and, uh, you know, just being by myself a lot uh, voluntarily, you know, I, I feel like as a result of depression, as a result of this sickness, I've come away very changed and, and not nearly... Uh, the same person that I used to be. Uh, I went through a long period of my life where I was uh, living by living living with my parents, uh, but not. I, I would choose to stay in my room and uh, not really come out uh, for anything. 
I was terrified of the outside world. And thanks to various things, uh, friends being the main reason, I was able to overcome that issue and uh, meet new people and go to new places. And ultimately, you move to America and get married and everything. And, and that was something that I feasibly couldn't have seen myself doing uh, in the old days when I was like a teenager and I couldn't even leave the house, you know, that was, uh, that was, I was a completely different person then. And I feel in a similar way, I'm a completely different person now compared to how I was then and how I was when I left England. I, I feel like I've gone through some really strange phases, you know, it's like a chrysalis of sorts. And depression was very much a cocoon for me in this scenario. I feel like after having gone through all of this, uh, and even now when I'm, st I'm still going through it, I'm just sort of pulling myself up, you know, I'm picking myself up and, and dusting myself off. Uh, I, I feel like there are things that I just can't do the same way that I used to be able to do. One, the, the main thing that I've noticed is I'm struggling to look people in the eye when I talk to them. And I don't know, I haven't really done much research on it. It's just something that I noticed literally yesterday. Uh, I don't know if that's something that's common, uh, but whenever people now directly want to talk to me, I look for things that I can look at to that, that make me feel safe, that make me feel like I'm not under the microscope, if that makes sense. And I don't know why that's happening. I don't know where that's coming from. Uh, I don't have that problem in therapy. In therapy, I feel like I can look my therapist in the eye. I don't have that problem with my wife or uh, some of my close friends, but there are a lot of people and a lot of, like, especially strangers where if somebody comes up to me and like even instigates a conversation, I will immediately just sort of like be like, where, where, where in the room should I be looking right now? When it's very obvious I should be looking at them face to face. I should be directly addressing them, but I'll try and find things to, to distract me, I guess. And that's worrying. I find that very worrying. I feel like maybe what I, what I think has happened is that depression has made me believe that I can't trust other people, if that makes sense. It's either that or I, I believe what, what may have happened is that I'm just very aware that people, when they look at me, I think this is it, actually. When people look at me, they can see what's going on. You know, and this is obviously not necessarily true, but it's something I believe almost completely that when people look at me, they know that I'm depressed or that I'm miserable or they can see it like it's an actual physical wound on me. And I, I'm trying to hide that. I'm trying to like, I'm like if I had like a big bandage on my face, like I would just be like, I'd turn my head the other way so they didn't have to look at it. That's just my natural instinct if, if that were the case. So when they look at me and I feel like they can see my depression, like it's a real physical scar, I, I'm trying to hide it and I can't because it's all over me. Uh, so that's something I've noticed and it's, it's, I've, it's got me concerned because I don't want, I really don't want to come out of this and I guess it's an impossible desire, but I really don't want to come out of depression with any of its effects still. I don't want it to have it, its hooks in me, you know? I don't want to be like, yeah, I'm the guy that was depressed and now I'm not, but I still carry those marks, you know, if that makes sense. I, I've i just started to notice a lot of, of social like problems that I'm having. I feel like I've been very impeded socially by depression. I don't know if that's something that you're going through but I've, I've definitely uh, started to pick up on that. And that's, I don't know how to correct that. I don't know what the best way is. I guess I'm just gonna have to force myself to look people in the eye uh, from now on, or maybe just practice in the mirror. Yeah, because I do struggle to look in the mirror a lot as well. That's another thing that I've noticed. And it's not, I don't even, you know, I'm not the most attractive of people, but I don't care, you know, at the end of the day. I, I, I'm comfortable with the way I look, but I just can't look at myself sometimes because I feel like I can, like, I can see it crawling on me, you know, not literally, phys like, like visually, I can just sort of feel it when I look at myself. I'm like, there's that depressed guy. He's going through that. Ah, uh, you know, what's, what, what, what's wrong with him? You know, that's, that's how I feel when I look at myself. And I don't want to feel that. And I don't 
want to feel like other people feel that. But that's what that's what I like. That's how it feels to me when when I'm in a a social situation, especially in like a group. If I'm in a group of people, I'm always like, oh gosh, I'm like the the blemish on on the the, the group that you know everybody else is is. And chances are they're going through their own things. But if I'm in a group of people, I'm like, oh, here's all the healthy people, and then there's me, and I'm ruining it for everybody. So that's just a problem. <laughs> I don't know how else to. I, I just wanted to talk about the fact that I'm I'm dealing with that. I don't really have a a solution to it yet, and I don't know if one will present itself. I'm probably going to have to look into this. But that's something that I've definitely uh, started to struggle with. I'm I'm positive that it's because of depression, because depression has made me a very socially isolated person. I've talked about it last time, there's a comfort to that if that's something that is just, it's a constant, so you sort of, you acclimate to it. It's like a security blanket. You just around it so much that it becomes something that helps or it feels like you're dependent on it. I And I'm kind of dependent on being lonely lately and and that's, that can be good or bad. Like I've managed to moderate it a little bit, but if, if it's having this much of a drastic effect on my social life, and I'm not like a social butterfly to begin with, but if it's making it difficult to even talk to people, then that's something that I'm seriously going to have to address. And uh, <laughs> I guess it's part of the healing process, you know? I, I guess um, I'm just going to have, especially in the uh, the line of work that I'm in I can't not talk to people I can't not uh, I can't not address people I can't hide from people so I'm going to have to find a way around that or find a way through that and uh if I, if you ever meet me and I'm I'm looking elsewhere and I'm trying to uh, if I'm, somebody asked me the other day like they noticed that I was doing it and they said are you all right and I'm like in my head, I'm like, no, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't know why I have to find somewhere else to look. But I mean, I'm okay. I'm not like, I'm not sick and I'm not freaking out. I'm just like, this is what's comfortable for me now. And uh, I'm not okay with that. But, you know, if you ask me if I'm okay, I'm going to tell you, yeah. Because <laughs> I don't want you to think that there's something wrong with me. I guess there is, though. That was very gloomy, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to update you guys on that. That's something that I'm noticing, and uh, hopefully, it's something I can figure out how to get a hold, uh, get a handle on. So, yeah, here's to looking people in the eye. I'll catch you guys next week.